Uh, I want to introduce uh, our next speaker here. Uh, how many in the room, and I'm giving you a um, slight opportunity to lie here, no. Uh, how many in the room are familiar with Project Drawdown? Okay. We are thrilled to have a partnership with Project Drawdown. We are thrilled that uh, Matt Scott from Project Drawdown is also on the advisory council at Planet Forward, and that's another shout out I want to do. We have advisory council members here uh, who work with us, support us, support you financially, morally, editorially, and every other way. So uh, Matt, thank you for that. But Matt is going to talk to you a little bit about something else, um, literally someone who's working to pass the mic and to engage other uh, communities and other stories and other narratives in what we know and what we're doing about our effort to draw down to lower greenhouse gases. So Matt Scott, over to you, Matt. Good to see you. Oh my gosh, am I all oh, you, oh, you got, up? You got a lob, you're on your own. All right, I'm out of here. There we go. <laughs> hey everyone, how are you doing this morning? Yeah. It's great to be here, great to be at GW. As always, I'm a GW class of 2014 alum, and I just have to say, Frank Sesno, Planet Ford, the George Washington University are very brave people for just letting me come up on stage and uh, do what I'm doing. And so let me see if I could get this clicker to work. Uh, and actually, let me bounce back just a second, um, because I want to start out by asking you all a question, ask you to consider the question that's behind me. What comes to mind when you think of stories? Think about it for a second, sit with it. Maybe it's a memory and an achievement that you're most proud of. Maybe it's a person that you met and something that you can't escape that you're sitting with. What comes to mind when I think of stories and the reason that I do my work at Project Drawdown as the director of storytelling and engagement is actually this photo. And so you might imagine that's me as a kid um, with my dad as he read me a story before I could read for myself. And I, like most people, gravitate to stories. I gravitated to stories as a kid at that young age. And I also gravitated to stories like this. I, I heard some tears a second ago when this came up. Who knows what, what this is? Uh, anyone familiar with what this is? Captain Planet? Yes, Captain Planet and the Planeteers. And I loved Captain Planet, and I think in retrospect, looking back, I realized that the reason I gravitated to Captain Planet and similar forms of media was that it represented these diverse voices that helped me see my power. So five young people from five different continents, most of them real, um, with five different powers, able to show up and make a difference. And I remember looking at this and thinking, oh, I could be one of them. I could do what they're doing. And you know, as I got older, as I gravitated away from animated characters, I actually found a new hero in my dad. Um, and my dad is a, was a real world superhero in his own right as I grew up, and I was always really inspired by his story. This is an image of a classroom that he was in, in at Robert R. Moton High School in Prince Edward County, Virginia. This is only a few years before he was a student there in the 50s. Um, and this was a school that had worse conditions because uh, at the time, especially as folks fought for it in the civil rights era, the conditions for schools for black students weren't as good as the schools for white students. And I think what's so remarkable is that as students fought for the conditions that they needed to succeed and to navigate, like think of the pandemic and the conditions that so many of us, so many of you students had learning virtually, um, they had horrible conditions and fighting for what was right, they lost access to school. The Virginia government decided to close the schools in Prince Edward County, Virginia in 1959. And so my dad and so many others, thousands of others were left without school. I'll also point out that the schools were closed not for one year, but for five whole years. So students, mostly black students in Prince Edward County did not have access to education. And I mention this because my dad's story is a nuanced one. He was one of a handful of people who was able to move away and complete his education, not only in high school living with white families and strangers, which was incredibly uncomfortable for someone who'd never left his hometown at that time in history especially, but also who graduated from college here in DC at Howard University, uh, went to the military, graduated from business school, met my lovely mom who you see there, uh, had a wonderful family. You see me back there in the orange shirt. Um, 
And my dad did so much more. Um, here's me in my awkward teen phase with my dad as he ran his business. I don't know why I show this photo, but I did. <laughs> Moving on. Um, and he made such a positive impact in the world. And the reason why I bring this up is because in 2017, six years ago, my dad passed away due to a rare form of leukemia. And when that happened, what I realized is that so often stories like his, stories of not just black men from Prince Edward County, Virginia, but stories of underrepresented communities often go unheard, which is really challenging because I think for any of us who come from a community that's not often represented, we know that representation matters. We know that representation is something that helps us um, not only be seen by others, but feel our own power and realize that we could be part of solutions. And so that's when I set out on my own journey to find solutions, to interview people, and to amplify voices of real world superheroes. Not just our problems, which are so often represented in the narrative, but the solutions and what we can do. And so I work at Project Drawdown, the nonprofit, the global nonprofit climate solutions resource, supported by the generous support of donors, if anyone wants to donate and support. But you know, when I think of Project Drawdown and when I think of the conversations happening today, I think of this question of what comes to mind when you think of global warming and climate change and a lot of what Ed Maybach shared. Um, and one thing I think is so interesting is that one study, and there are so many studies on this, but one study a few years back that talked about this pointed to how 44% of people responded with outcomes, 18% responded with causes, but only 3% responded with solutions. This is getting better and better with time as we have more storytellers, including the Planet Ford correspondents, but we need to rewrite the narrative and help folks see solutions so that they could bring them to life. And that's what my work is with Project Drawdown on Drawdown Stories, and particularly through a series called Drawdown's Neighborhood, which you can check out at drawdown.org neighborhood. And so here are the 37 climate heroes we've featured today. The thing I love about this is I've spent an hour, multiple hours actually with each and every one of them. And they're real everyday people who have real everyday stories. Um, and their climate stories as represented in Drawdown's Neighborhood, this climate solution short documentary series, are often overlooked and things you wouldn't expect in climate conversations. And in fact, um, there's a series that we're releasing from New Orleans, which is, I think, notoriously a place that we associate with Hurricane Katrina or with the storms. Um, but there are real world people who are not only victims to the problem, but actually real world superheroes making a difference. So let me see. Here's a preview of Drawdown's Neighborhood New Orleans. We'll get the audio to work in a second. Here we go. But um, this is the trailer for the series. And it, just checking it out, My you can Melly see some Asia. of the folks. My name is Shelly Stias, and, so and I'm helping the world reach Drawdown. I am helping the world reach Drawdown. I'm helping the world reach Drawdown by building a resilient future. By bringing power to those without power. By encouraging young leaders through the meaningful work of growing food. By planting trees in New Orleans through restoration, exposure, and awareness. The thing I love about the series, as you check it out, and as, it, as this video wraps up, is that it's so human and it features real human voices, real people making a difference, and not just in their own way with individual actions, but influencing bigger organizations and systems. And I think the other key thing, and the power of stories that we often overlook beyond the inspiration and information, is the ability of stories to build power through amplifying diverse voices that have often been left out of the climate conversation, especially the voices of those most vulnerable to the impacts of climate. Consider for yourself what voices and stories often go unheard. Joseph Harris, who's the founder of Change Narrative and one of our Drawdown's Neighborhood interviewees, one of the three you'll hear from in the next few minutes, is someone who knows the ability of stories to build power and their importance. Take a look. The stories from frontline communities, I feel, that are the essential testimonies that we don't often hear, but that can really guide us in the the just solutions that we're seeking. It's so simple. 
The stories of frontline communities are often not included in the narrative, but they do have power in solutions. And we often talk about the problem, but we don't talk about all of the people who are left on the sidelines who we're not bringing into the conversation. And the thing I love about Joe Smith's story is that as a wife, as a mom, as a storyteller, as an emotional person, as a farmer, as someone who's making a difference, she not only knows the ability of stories to build power, but also to shape culture. Shape culture through compelling narratives. You're noticing a theme if you know the theme of today's <laughs> summit. Who are the role models who inspire you? This is so critical, again, because representation matters, because so often, um, many of us, especially from underrepresented communities, I say this is a young black queer person, that we don't see ourselves represented in stories. I think of Clara Katongo, though, with the organization Tree Pittsburgh, and how Wangari Mathai, the first African woman to win the Nobel Peace Prize, is someone who inspired her and helped her go from a kid in Uganda who was afraid of forests, believe it or not, to being someone who's actually making a difference. For so long the people have been pressed down The system got me wonder where to break down Sun up to sun down, working for my ransom Trying not to feel like I'm a left down But moving forward as I sway to the beat And finding my position as I prepare the heat Swaying to the rhythm, feeling how I flow. I only put concrete waves I swam through, so it's straight to the roots I go. Man's elevated, it's love related, and it's straight to the roots I go. Beautiful singer. But Clara and her voice and the song, Roots, which she, which she put out, are a reminder that so often there's a lot that we have to navigate in order to show up, in order to feel comfortable. But she not only roots herself in her role models, like Wangari Mathai, but also just in her identity, in her perspective, in so much that helps her show up. And none of that would be possible without the representation so that she could see what she could be, so she could see what's possible. All of this is necessary, and stories are necessary. The work that you all are doing as students making stories is necessary because it helps change behavior and drive towards sustainable solutions. Um, many of them drawdown climate solutions, some of the 93 drawdown solutions that we've identified. Consider for yourself what helps unlock your own real world superpowers, or what stories could help unlock your superpowers. What is it that you've seen when you think of those role models that helps you feel powerful and tap into that power? I think of Robin Okinawa, who's with the phenomenal Captain Planet Foundation. As you know, I'm a fanboy of Captain Planet. Um, but I interviewed Robin, and she talks about the power of representation helping her make an impact with kids all over the world. If representation didn't matter, we wouldn't talk about it. But because people have been so historically excluded from spaces, to see yourself in that space and know that you belong, that matters. Because never would I have thought that I could do the job that I wanted to do in a space that focused on black people and climate. Now I get to do that, but with kids all over the world. And that's really the point. It's like if we provide people a pathway to feeling like they belong and then provide them the tools to know what kinds of solutions we need, like that is the impact that you could have. You could have someone like Robin who initially didn't see themselves belonging as a young black queer woman to ultimately show up, see that she belongs, and then implement the solutions, the sustainable solutions our world needs. And that's where the stories that you're all telling as correspondents, as contributors with Planet Forward matter so much because they help people see that they belong and they help people create a pathway to actually making an impact. And the thing that I love is that there are so many incredible storytellers. Beverly, shout out to you as one of them. <laughs> I think of Hannah, who I've met at a bunch of Planet Forward events recently. I'm thinking of Joe Ree also, who comes to mind. Like that there are all these people who are telling these stories that need to be heard, and you all, as students, as storytellers, have the power to bring people into this conversation. Hey. Um, <laughs> <laughs> 
Diverse voices, compelling narratives, sustainable solutions are what we need to reach drawdown and to move our planet forward. And in the process, they build power, they shape culture, they change behavior. Um, so often we focus on the victimhood, on the problems, on the, the overwhelm and the powerlessness and the stress that we feel. But something that I encourage you all to do as storytellers is find ways to pass the mic. Pass the mic to the voices and the stories that often go unheard. Pass the mic to the opportunity and not just the problem. We don't talk nearly enough about solutions and the problem. That's what Project Drawdown's all about, and that's what my work on Drawdown Stories is about. Um, and so if there's one thing I wanna wrap up with, it's a quote from my favorite superhero, that when it comes to passing the mic, the power is yours. Thank you, everybody. Brilliant. You do have superpower. It's awesome. And the mic is superpower. I mean, there is tremendous stuff there. <clears throat> um, we have some news. We do. So we're very much about solutions, too, at Planet Forward, right? The stories we tell. What are the ideas and the innovations <clears throat> to move the planet forward? So we're very much aligned. By the way, in that narrative, it's, this is not PR. It's not greenwashing. It's not taking out any of the struggle or the obstacle or the controversy or the complexity. It's putting that in context, and it's tying it to, okay, what are we going to do about it? Yeah. So what's our news? Well, number one, I, I love how you set that up. Well, we are launching um, the a reporting partnership between Planet Forward and our Drawdown Story, or Project Drawdown and our Drawdown Stories program and Planet Forward. And so a few things that we'll be doing with that. Number one is that um, Drawdown Stories will be supporting students, faculty, other community members in passing the mic to narratives that we often don't feel belong. So it's not just even about climate solutions and underrepresented communities, but it's about what we have to share, what we have to go through to show up, all of the things that come up in the Drawdowns Neighborhood series. So, so there's that element. There's also an element of amplifying stories and voices and creating opportunities for students to be part of our story. We're going to that. identify, and if yes. some of you are interested in, you. in working on a project through us with Project Drawdown to, see, to visit these neighborhoods and amplify these voices, that's what the partnership is going to be next mm -hmm. year. And we're going to then take those stories that you produce, Project Drawdown will amplify them, we will amplify them, and we're gonna to try to pull an event together around that too, so that we can share them as broadly as possible to elevate these voices, yes? That's right. The other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna hijack uh, this, this fine gentleman here, and we're going to, for those of you from schools across the country, in the fall we'll do an event yes. and we're gonna ask Matt to speak to you and your students, and you can gather virtually, and we'd like to share the very story that you heard here and what Project Drawdown is doing and what Matt is doing with you and your students on your campuses, so stay tuned for that. So we're awesomely looking forward to this. this thank you so much, and thanks everyone, and know, again, you have the power to pass the mic, and thank you so much for even trying. We appreciate it. Thank you. And Matt's going to be around. Matt's going to be doing a workshop. You'll see him at Coffee Break, which we're going to be going to in just a few minutes at lunch. So by all means, talk about Project Drawdown. It is an amazing thing. I actually use it in my sustainability reporting class. It's one of our texts because it's both great information and it's great storytelling. <laughs> <laughs>